Good morning. Welcome to Durham's 70th Memorial Day celebration. I am Town Council Chair Kitty Marple. We get a great turnout for this event every year, and I have to say that this was bigger than last year. Um, and I am so appreciative that so many people show their support for military uh, members and those who have passed. Um, right now, we will enjoy Madeline Blandini singing our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the Reverend Mary Westfall will deliver the invocation. Good morning. It is always such a joy to join as community. Today brings a particular poignancy. And I take, invite, invite you to take a moment and look around at this community, at the children gathered here, at neighbors you may have known for decades, perhaps people you have not met before. But here in this sacred place, in this sacred moment, as community, we remember with deep gratitude those who made the ultimate sacrifice. And though I trust that we probably come from different faith traditions or different ways of expressing that, I would invite us into a moment of silence and then a prayer as we remember those who have sacrificed, their families, and the many veterans who continue to live amongst us today, sometimes without recognition or adequate support. So please join me in a moment of silence. Words seem inadequate, O oh God, to express our gratitude and our awe at those who are willing to serve this nation and seek to preserve its goodness and freedom. We remember particularly today those who have fallen due to that commitment, those who left these shores to go to distant places for communities like this. Some we know by name and all are known by you. And so we entrust their spirits to your safekeeping for all time. And even as we remember those committed men and women who made the ultimate sacrifice, we know that they also left behind family who made an incredible sacrifice. Mothers and fathers, grandparents, spouses, children, friends. And so on this day of sacred memory, we think of those families, some known to us, but all known to you. And we ask that a spirit of compassion and strength and healing continue to be with them. 
And O oh God, though we call you by many names or perhaps do not call upon you at all, as we stand here today, a community grateful for our freedoms, grateful for the beauty of the place we live, grateful for the faces of these children and the wisdom of our elders, we know that there is still much we can and must do to continue to work for a world that is filled with peace, that's filled with justice, that these children will grow up and know a world beyond war. That is our prayer this day. We trust that now and always you hold all people in your heart and in your love. May that give us strength to be the people we are called to be, a people of justice, compassion, freedom, and hope. Amen. It is a personal honor for me to introduce this year's Grand Marshal, uh, United States Air Force retired Lieutenant Colonel Woody Frazier. Uh, the Frasers, he and his wife Betty, uh, were very good friends of my parents. and. Uh, uh, my parents miss seeing them many years uh, as they all uh, advanced in age. Uh, Woody is a New Hampshire native, born in Rochester in 1924. Growing up primarily in Rochester, he graduated high school in Northborough, Massachusetts. Shortly after starting college, he decided to begin his service to our country and left after three months to enlist in the Army, ultimately joining the Army Air Corps in support of World War II. After completing aviation navigation training in 1944, he was commissioned as a second lieutenant and assigned to the effort in the European theater. During this tour, he flew 35 missions in B-24s from Italy to a wide range of targets across Europe, crash landing three times as a result of enemy action, twice in Yugoslavia and once in Poland. He has been awarded the Distinguished, the distinguished Flying Cross and Purple Heart. Following World War II, he attended the University of New Hampshire, receiving a Bachelor of Science degree in mathematics, and met a charming young lady, Betty, who soon became his wife. After graduating from UNH in 1949, he was called back to active duty and was assigned to one of the first air refueling units in the Air Force. Flying KB-29Ms as a radar navigator, Woody supported refueling operations from England to Guam in support of the Korean conflict. He was attached to the Strategic Air Command for over 25 years, supporting their mission to maintain peace, flying in B-47s, B-58s, the first bomber to fly at Mach 2, that's twice the speed of sound, and 60,000 feet, and B-52s. In addition, he held various other non-flying positions, including Chief of Services at a base in Vietnam, Chief of Maintenance for a tanker unit supporting B-52s in Vietnam, and a professor leading AFROTC at Ball State. Stationed at numerous bases across the country and countless temporary duty, otherwise known as TDY, assignments abroad, Woody retired as a lieutenant colonel in 1977 excuse me, after enjoying a 31-year career. He transitioned from service to country to service to town, working on numerous boards and the master plan committee for the town of Madbury, where he resided for 25 years. Even though he lived in Madbury, he and Betty continued to keep Durham close to their hearts, enjoying almost daily walks with their beloved grand dog and visits to the dairy bar. He has enjoyed his retirement, spending many summers at Lake Winnipesaukee on his boat, and continuing his passion of photography. Betty and Woody now reside in Durham. Can we all have a uh, applause for uh, Woody Fraser, please? Thank you. A relatively new member of our community is a retired colonel from the Air Force. Uh, and his name's Hunt Kerrigan. Uh, colonel Hunt Kerrigan recently retired after 32 years of service in the United States Army and moved with his family to Durham. Colonel Kerrigan was stationed in Alaska where he commanded and oversaw the welfare of more than 1,000 soldiers. 
He has served in Iraq and Afghanistan, and his last tour of duty was in the Pentagon. Colonel Kerrigan's wife, Stephanie, is serving in the New Hampshire Air National Guard. There are two boys, Jonathan, seven years old, and Daniel, five years old, both attending Portsmouth Christian Academy. Colonel Kerrigan would like to make a few comments about military service and our current military engagement around the world. Uh, Colonel Fraser, thank you, sir. Uh, Steve and Donna Hardy, it's a tremendous honor to be with you again. Thank you. Uh, Reverend Westfall, uh, thank you and for your remarks and for Town Council Chair Marple. Thank you. It's great to be here. Ladies and gentlemen, and most importantly, veterans, thank you um, for the honors to be here today and recognize our service members. And remember those who lost their lives in service to our great nation on this Memorial Day. And by the way, just a, a great shout out and thank you to all the kids that are be here. This is just wonderful. It's really inspiring to see young people out here today. And I know it's cold. I think as was mentioned, my wife and I moved from Alaska. So this is what Alaska is like in August. So we're kind of used to this, but I'll, I'll keep my remarks short. And, and by the way, I, I'm actually in the Army, not in the Air Force. My wife got a big kick out of that, but I'm actually a retired Army. Uh, you know, I got an opportunity to do what, um, what I really love to do in the Army after 32 years. I drove an um, armored vehicle on the East German border in 1983, parachuted out of C-130s at Fort Benning, commanded. Uh, just a great experience. I really enjoyed my time in the service. Uh, as mentioned, my wife's a civil engineer in the New Hampshire Air National Guard, and I've got two beautiful, wonderful boys, uh, Jonathan Seven and Daniel Five, uh, both going to Portsmouth Christian Academy. Ladies and gentlemen, there were just two things I wanted to highlight uh, today that I think is very important. First, there's a strong sense of honor within the military from the days of the Revolutionary War, even to now the global war on terrorism. And second, which I think is my most important point, is that we're still a nation at war. Throughout my years of service uh, with men and women, uh, from privates to generals, and my interaction with veterans around the country, the common thread I see in all of them is a deep sense of selfless service. Service to a greater good, or as General MacArthur pointed out in 1962 speech at West Point, those serving in the military driven by a strong sense of duty, honor, and country. And this is the very core of who we are. Along these lines, and in light of Memorial Day, I wanted to tell you a quick story about courage and selfless service that epitomizes the true grit and honor among those serving in the military. This is a story of a Marine Corps second lieutenant in combat in 1952. And the words of his citation reads as follow. And before I read this, it's just really in light of Memorial Day, we're honoring and recognizing those who served years ago. Here's a great example. A Marine Corps second lieutenant while on a scouting mission was informed that the point man of the patrol was hit by enemy fire. The lieutenant immediately advanced in the face of heavy weapons and mortar fire, mortar fire to the forward point of the patrol. With his men providing covering fire, the lieutenant crawled towards the wounded Marine and removed him from the slope of the hill through heavy enemy fire. Although painfully wounded, placing the casualty in a comfortable position, the lieutenant refused to be evacuated and in the company of another Marine remained in the area for about an hour to cover the evacuation of a Marine. While fighting off several fanatical enemy attacks, he was eventually evacuated himself. By his inspiring leadership, courageous initiative, and selfless service on behalf of another, the lieutenant was instrumental in saving the, lives, the, saving the life of a wounded Marine. That lieutenant was eventually awarded the Silver Star. That Marine lieutenant was my father. He served in World War II as enlisted Marine, got a battlefield commission, and served in the Korean War. He earned six Purple Hearts and a Silver Star. My dad was my first impression of veterans. I remember my dad, particularly when we lived in New York City, would go out of his way to thank those in uniform, but especially thanking our police officers, who every day sacrifice so much to keep us safe. I'd like to just give them a quick round of applause. 
I really appreciate what you do. Today, we make the point of re remembering those who sacrificed for our nation, even all the way back to the Revolutionary War. When you have a moment, please take a look at the monument behind us. I was here yesterday and just took some time to really sit down and look at it. On some of the panels you'll read, for example, one of the panels says, Durham veterans in the War of the Revolution. Some of the men who served with names like True Worthy Davis Dungan, Dan Martin Woodman, Slave, and Hate Evil Lighten. These men, like so many others, sacrificed so much for our freedom. On the other side of the monument, those who served in World War I, also known as the World War, they're highlighted also with an, in, with an, um, an inscription asking us to remember. And the inscription says, think upon them, thou who art passing by. Take a moment and remember those who sacrificed so much. Finally, ladies and gentlemen, of all the points I made, this is the most important. For the past 16 years, we've had men and women serving in harm's way all around the world from Iraq, Afghanistan, Somalia, Yemen, and other countries. We are still clearly a nation at war, and men and women are still fighting and dying. In fact, last month, two young Army Rangers, Sergeant Cameron Thomas and Sergeant Joshua Ro Rogers, were both killed in Afghanistan. Yesterday, my wife and myself and my boys were at Logan Airport saying farewell, farewell to dozens of New Hampshire Air National Guardsmen deploying to the Middle East. We are a nation that enjoys freedom, and today we take the time to remember those who paid the last full measure. So to service members, veterans, and families, and families, thank you for your faithful service to our great nation a nation which is, by God's grace in your service, the land of the free and the home of the brave. Thank you, and may the Lord continue to bless our veterans and our great country. Thank you. Thank you very much, Colonel Kerrigan. Uh, Stephen and Donna Hardy will now lay a wreath at Durham's War Memorial. <coughs> They are a Gold Star family because they lost, <clears throat> excuse me, their son Nate while he was in military service.
This is the end of our formal ceremony. We remind everyone that the official state war memorial is a small chapel in the Memorial Union Building at UNH. There, another wreath has been placed to honor all New Hampshire residents who perished while in military action from World War I to the present day. The memorial is open today for those who care to visit. I thank all parade participants, especially all of the bees, the middle school jazz band soloist Madeline Blandini, trumpet soloist Judy McGann, Gold Star parents Donna and Stephen Hardy, Dearborn's Company, Durham Parks and Recreation Coordinator Rachel Kozowski, the Parks and Rec Committee, and all of Durham's employees who have made this day so memorable. Please give them a hand. Thank you so much for coming.